It's a harsh reality, but some people in our lives take pleasure in causing harm and chaos. Think about it. You could be sharing moments, trusting someone, only to discover they are the very source of your turmoil. Today we dive deep into a topic that's as fascinating as it is frightening, recognizing the signs you're dealing with an evil person. Whether it's a colleague, a friend, or even a family member, these individuals can be masters of deception, hiding their true nature behind charm and charisma. Today, we're not just exploring this dark side of human behavior out of curiosity. Understanding these signs can be life-changing. The Stoics believed in the power of perception and the importance of living a life guided by reason and virtue. By identifying and understanding these toxic traits, we can protect our peace of mind and cultivate healthier relationships, staying true to the Stoic principles of wisdom and self-control. Stay with us as we uncover five telltale signs of an evil person. By the end of this video, you'll not only be better equipped to spot these behaviors, but also learn practical ways to safeguard your mental health and well-being. And if you appreciate what we're doing here, a simple, free favor I'll ask from you is to hit the subscribe button and please don't skip any part of the video. You won't want to miss our special bonus section where I'll share an effective strategy for setting firm boundaries with these individuals. Let's embark on this journey of self-awareness and resilience together. Number 1. Charming and Charismatic At first, when we talk about people who seem charming and charismatic at first, it's important to remember that appearances can be deceiving. These individuals often have a way of lighting up a room, making everyone around them feel special and valued. They know exactly what to say to make you feel like you've just made a new best friend. At first glance, they seem like the perfect person, witty, engaging, and seemingly interested in your life. It's easy to get swept up in their charm, thinking you found someone truly special. However, the Stoics teach us to look beyond the surface and seek the truth through rational thought and observation. Over time, you might start to notice little cracks in their facade. Maybe they always need to be the center of attention, overshadowing others in social settings. They might talk over you, interrupt you, or even subtly put you down in front of others. These aren't just quirks or signs of an extroverted personality. They're red flags. The Stoics would advise us to observe these behaviors with a clear mind, unclouded by the initial excitement of their charisma. Imagine being at a party where this person is the life of the event, telling jokes and captivating the crowd. At first it feels great to be in their orbit, but as the evening progresses, you realize they're dominating every conversation, making everything about themselves. When you try to share something about your life, they quickly redirect the topic back to them. This is where the stoic principle of apatheia, a state of being undisturbed by external things, comes in handy. By staying emotionally balanced, you can see through their charming act and recognize the self-centered nature underneath. It's also crucial to pay attention to how they react when things don't go their way. A person who is genuinely kind and caring will handle disappointments and disagreements with grace and understanding. But someone who is merely playing a role to gain your trust might quickly become angry or defensive. They might lash out or try to manipulate the situation to regain control. According to Stoic wisdom, such reactions are clear indicators of a lack of virtuous character. Marcus Aurelius reminds us to be wary of those who display signs of anger and manipulation, as these are not the traits of a rational and virtuous person. The key here is to take your time and trust your instincts. The Stoics believed in the power of observation and the importance of not rushing to judgment based on first impressions. Epictetus taught that we should carefully evaluate the character of those we allow into our inner circle. So, if someone seems too good to be true, give yourself the space to observe their actions over time. Notice how they treat others, especially when they think no one is watching. True character is revealed in how a person behaves when they aren't trying to impress anyone. Remember, not everyone who seems charming and charismatic has good intentions. Some people use their charm as a tool for manipulation. By staying grounded and mindful, 
you can protect yourself from being taken in by a superficial facade. Stay true to the stoic principles of wisdom and discernment, and you'll be better equipped to navigate these complex social interactions. Number 2. Lack of Empathy Another crucial sign to watch out for is a lack of empathy. Empathy is the ability to understand and share the feelings of others. It's what allows us to connect deeply with those around us, to offer support when it's needed, and to create meaningful relationships. However, there are individuals out there who seem to completely lack this essential human trait. They don't care about how their actions or words affect others, and this can have a devastating impact on those around them. The Stoics believed in the importance of compassion and understanding as fundamental virtues. Marcus Aurelius often spoke about the interconnectedness of humanity and the need to consider the well-being of others as part of our own well-being. So, when we encounter someone who shows a blatant disregard for the feelings of others, it's a serious red flag. Imagine you're sharing something deeply personal with a friend, hoping for some comfort or understanding. Instead of showing any genuine concern, they brush off your feelings or even mock your vulnerability. This lack of empathy can make you feel isolated and misunderstood. It's not just about them not being there for you in tough times. It's also about them failing to share in your joy or celebrate your successes. A person who lacks empathy won't cheer for your achievements. They might even undermine them or take credit themselves. This behavior is not just limited to personal relationships. Consider a boss who pushes their employees to the brink, showing no concern for their well-being. They might demand long hours without fair compensation, ignore requests for time off, or publicly criticize employees in a way that's meant to humiliate rather than constructively guide. This creates a toxic work environment where people feel undervalued and stressed. The Stoics would advise us to maintain our inner peace and integrity in such situations, recognizing that the lack of empathy in others is a reflection of their character, not ours. Furthermore, a lack of empathy can lead to more sinister behaviors. People who cannot empathize with others may engage in actions that are outright cruel, all without any sense of guilt or remorse. They might lie, cheat, or even inflict physical harm without a second thought about the pain they're causing. The Stoic philosopher Seneca emphasized the importance of kindness and justice, teaching that our actions should always reflect our inner virtue. When someone lacks empathy, they're fundamentally disconnected from these values. A lack of empathy is also evident in smaller, everyday interactions. For example, you might notice that someone constantly interrupts conversations to talk about themselves, shows little interest in what others have to say, or fails to offer help when it's clearly needed. These might seem like minor annoyances at first, but they add up to a pattern of behavior that reveals a deeper issue. The Stoics would remind us to be observant and discerning, understanding that these small signs are indicative of a person's true character. If you find yourself dealing with someone who consistently lacks empathy, it's important to set boundaries to protect your own mental and emotional health. The Stoics believed in the importance of maintaining our own well-being and not allowing the negativity of others to disturb our peace. You have the right to distance yourself from those who drain your energy and bring you down. Number 3. Manipulation Another major sign of an evil person is manipulation. Manipulation is when someone uses deceit or cunning tactics to control or influence others to get what they want. It's a subtle, often insidious behavior that can be incredibly damaging to those on the receiving end. Manipulators are skilled at twisting situations, making you question your reality, and bending your will to suit their needs. This can leave you feeling confused, powerless, and unsure of your own judgments. Let's think about manipulation from a Stoic perspective. The Stoics valued clarity of thought and the ability to see things as they truly are. They taught that our perceptions should be grounded in reality and that we should remain steadfast in our principles, no matter the external pressures. When someone manipulates you, they are attempting to cloud your perception and distort reality making it difficult for you to stay true to these stoic ideals. A common form of manipulation 
is gaslighting, where the manipulator tries to make you doubt your own memory, perception, or sanity. They might deny that certain events happened, or they might twist your words and actions to make you feel at fault. For example, let's say you confront a friend about something hurtful they said. Instead of acknowledging it, they might turn the tables, accusing you of being overly sensitive or misremembering the situation. This can erode your confidence and make you reliant on the manipulator's version of reality. Manipulators are also adept at playing the victim. They might guilt trip you into doing things you don't want to do by making you feel responsible for their happiness or well-being. You might have a friend who constantly complains about their problems, expecting you to drop everything to help them. Yet they are never there for you in return. They might say things like, if you were really my friend, you'd do this for me, making you feel obligated to comply. The Stoics, especially Epictetus, emphasize the importance of understanding what is within our control and what is not. We cannot control others' actions or emotions, only our response to them. Consider how a manipulator might use flattery or charm to get their way. At first, this can feel great. They might shower you with compliments and make you feel special. But over time, you might notice that their praise comes with strings attached. They might compliment you when they want something from you or when they need you to do something for them. This can make you feel like you owe them or that you need to live up to their expectations to maintain their approval. The Stoics would remind us that true virtue and self-worth come from within, not from the fleeting approval of others. Manipulation can also take the form of isolation. A manipulative person might try to cut you off from your friends and family, making you more dependent on them. They might say things like, your friends don't really care about you, or your family doesn't understand you like I do. This tactic makes it easier for them to control you because you become more reliant on them for support and validation. The Stoics believed in maintaining strong, supportive relationships with others, recognizing that we are social beings who thrive in community. Isolation goes against these principles as it weakens our support network and makes us more vulnerable to manipulation. Financial manipulation is another tactic used by evil people. They might borrow money and never repay it, or they might control your finances to limit your independence. For instance, a partner might insist on managing all the money in the relationship, making you ask for permission to spend anything. This control over finances can make it difficult for you to leave the relationship or assert your independence. The Stoics would encourage us to seek self-sufficiency and independence, ensuring that we are not unduly influenced or controlled by others. Recognizing manipulation for what it is can be challenging, especially when you care about the person involved. The Stoics teach us to be vigilant and discerning, to see things clearly, and to act with integrity. If you suspect someone is manipulating you, take a step back and assess the situation objectively. Are they consistently prioritizing their needs over yours? Do they make you feel guilty or unsure of yourself? Are they trying to control aspects of your life or isolate you from others? It's important to set firm boundaries with manipulators and stand your ground. Communicate clearly and assertively about what you will and will not tolerate. Remember, you have the right to your own thoughts, feelings, and actions. The Stoics remind us that while we cannot control how others behave, we can control how we respond. By maintaining our inner strength and clarity, we can protect ourselves from the harmful effects of manipulation and stay true to our values. Number 4. Controlling Behavior One of the most glaring signs of an evil person is controlling behavior. This goes beyond mere preferences or quirks. It's about someone who seeks to dominate every aspect of your life, leaving little room for your own autonomy and decisions. Controlling individuals often disguise their behavior as concern or care, but underneath, it's about power and control. The Stoics, who valued personal freedom and self-control, would see this behavior as fundamentally opposed to living a virtuous life. Controlling behavior can manifest in many ways. For instance, you might have a friend who insists on always choosing where you go and what you do together. While it might seem harmless at first, 
Over time, you start to realize that your preferences and opinions are consistently ignored or overridden. They might say things like, I know what's best for us, or you'll have more fun if you just listen to me. This isn't about mutual decision-making. It's about one person exerting their will over another. In relationships, controlling behavior can become even more dangerous. A partner might monitor your whereabouts, demand constant updates on your activities, and even dictate who you can and cannot see. They might go through your phone, check your messages, or insist on knowing all your passwords. This kind of surveillance and micromanagement can make you feel trapped and anxious, constantly walking on eggshells to avoid conflict. The Stoics, particularly Epictetus, emphasize the importance of maintaining your own inner freedom and autonomy, regardless of external pressures. Control can also come in the form of financial manipulation. A controlling partner or family member might take charge of all financial decisions, doling out money as they see fit, and keeping you financially dependent on them. They might say, I handle the money because you're not good with finances, or it's easier if I just take care of everything. This can strip you of your financial independence and make it difficult to leave the relationship or assert your own choices. The Stoics believed in self-sufficiency and managing your own resources wisely, viewing financial control as a form of enslavement that must be resisted. Another way controlling behavior shows up is through isolation. A controlling person might try to cut you off from friends and family, claiming that they're the only one who truly understands you or cares about you. They might criticize your loved ones, saying things like, your friends don't really care about you, or your family is toxic. Over time, you might find yourself increasingly isolated, relying solely on the controlling person for support and companionship. The Stoics recognize the importance of community and supportive relationships, seeing isolation as detrimental to both personal growth and well-being. Controlling individuals also often use threats and intimidation to maintain their power. They might threaten to leave you, harm themselves, or even hurt you if you don't comply with their demands. This creates an environment of fear and anxiety, making it difficult to think clearly or make decisions that are best for you. The Stoics, especially Seneca, taught that we should face our fears and not allow others to intimidate us into submission. True courage and wisdom lie in standing firm against such threats and reclaiming our own power. It's important to understand that controlling behavior is about more than just wanting things done a certain way. It's about fundamentally undermining your ability to make your own choices and live your own life. The Stoics would advise us to recognize these behaviors for what they are, an attack on our autonomy and a violation of our personal freedom. By staying true to our values and maintaining our strength, we can resist the influence of controlling individuals and reclaim our right to live freely. If you find yourself dealing with someone who exhibits controlling behavior, it's crucial to set firm boundaries and assert your independence. Communicate clearly about your needs and limits, and don't be afraid to seek support from others who understand your situation. Remember, the Stoics teach us that we cannot control others, but we can control our own reactions and decisions. By staying grounded in our principles and valuing our own autonomy, we can protect ourselves from the harmful effects of controlling behavior and live more authentic, fulfilling lives. Number five. Pathological lying. Another unmistakable sign of an evil person is pathological lying. This goes beyond the occasional white lies that most people tell. Pathological liars deceive constantly, often without any apparent reason. They fabricate stories, manipulate facts, and distort reality to suit their own needs or to gain an advantage over others. This behavior can be incredibly damaging to relationships eroding trust, and creating a web of deceit that's difficult to untangle. The Stoics valued truth and integrity above all else. They believed that a virtuous life was grounded in honesty, and that deceit was a fundamental betrayal of one's character. Marcus Aurelius emphasized living in accordance with nature, 
which means aligning our actions with truth and reason. When someone lies pathologically, they are living in direct opposition to these principles, creating a false reality that benefits only themselves. Pathological lying can take many forms. It might start with small, seemingly harmless lies, like embellishing a story to make themselves look better or more interesting. Over time, these lies can escalate, covering up mistakes or wrongdoings, and manipulating others to achieve their goals. A pathological liar might claim to have accomplished things they haven't, falsely take credit for others' work, or make up stories about their past to gain sympathy or admiration. This constant dishonesty creates a distorted view of reality, where you can never be sure what's true and what's fabricated. Consider how a pathological liar might operate in a workplace. They might lie about their qualifications, exaggerate their contributions to projects, or spread false rumors about colleagues to sabotage them. This can create a toxic environment where trust is undermined and people are constantly on edge, unsure of who to believe. The Stoics would advise us to remain steadfast in our own integrity, not allowing ourselves to be swayed by the deceitful actions of others. Epictetus taught that we should focus on what we can control, our own thoughts and actions, and not be disturbed by the dishonesty of those around us. In personal relationships, pathological lying can be even more destructive. Imagine being in a relationship with someone who constantly lies about their whereabouts, their past, or their feelings. This behavior can make you feel insecure, anxious, and constantly questioning your own perceptions. You might find yourself doubting your memory or second-guessing your instincts, which is exactly what the liar wants. They thrive on creating confusion and instability, keeping you off balance so they can maintain control. The Stoics would remind us to trust our own judgment and not be swayed by the manipulations of others. Seneca taught that true peace comes from within and that we should not allow the deceit of others to disturb our inner tranquility. One of the most insidious aspects of pathological lying is that it's often difficult to detect at first. Pathological liars can be incredibly convincing, telling their lies with such confidence and detail that it's hard not to believe them. They might mix truth with lies, making it even more challenging to discern what's real. This is where the stoic principle of vigilance comes into play. We must remain observant and critical, not taking things at face value, but instead seeking the truth through careful consideration and evidence. When you catch someone in a lie, pay attention to how they react. Do they become defensive or aggressive? Do they try to turn the tables and blame you? Or do they offer a plausible explanation that seems to make sense, even if it's just another layer of deceit? A genuine person will admit to their mistakes and strive to correct them, while a pathological liar will double down on their falsehoods, weaving an even more intricate web of lies. The Stoics would counsel us to remain calm and rational in the face of such behavior, recognizing it for what it is and not allowing it to provoke us. It's also important to consider the long-term impact of pathological lying. Over time, it can erode the very foundation of trust that any relationship is built upon. Once trust is broken, it's incredibly difficult to rebuild. You might find yourself constantly suspicious, always wondering if you're being lied to again. This can lead to a toxic cycle of mistrust and resentment. The Stoics believed in the importance of building strong, honest relationships based on mutual respect and understanding. When dealing with a pathological liar, you must decide whether it's worth trying to rebuild that trust or whether it's healthier to distance yourself from their toxic influence. If you find yourself entangled with a pathological liar, it's crucial to set firm boundaries and protect your own mental and emotional well-being. The Stoics would advise us to remain true to our own values and principles, not allowing ourselves to be dragged down by the deceit of others. Be clear about what you will and will not tolerate, and don't be afraid to walk away from a relationship or situation that is built on lies. Remember, your peace of mind and integrity are more important than maintaining a connection with someone who consistently deceives you. Bonus. Setting Boundaries. 
Now how can you protect yourself from these harmful behaviors while maintaining your peace and integrity? Setting boundaries is one of the most crucial skills you can develop when dealing with difficult or toxic people. Boundaries are about defining what you will and will not accept in your relationships, and they are essential for protecting your mental, emotional, and even physical well-being. The Stoics, who emphasize the importance of personal integrity and inner peace, would see boundary setting as a fundamental practice for maintaining a virtuous and tranquil life. First and foremost, it's important to recognize that setting boundaries is not about being harsh or unkind. It's about respecting yourself and ensuring that others respect you as well. The Stoics believed in the importance of self-respect and living in harmony with our true nature. By setting clear boundaries, you're not only protecting yourself, but also fostering healthier interactions with others. When it comes to setting boundaries, clarity is key. You need to be specific about what behaviors you will not tolerate and communicate this clearly and assertively. For example, if you have a friend who frequently belittles you or puts you down, you might say, I appreciate our friendship, but I won't tolerate being spoken to in a disrespectful manner. If this continues, I will have to distance myself. This approach is direct and leaves no room for misinterpretation. According to Stoic principles, this kind of clear communication helps maintain order and respect in relationships. Another important aspect of setting boundaries is consistency. It's not enough to state your boundaries once and expect others to adhere to them without reminders. You must consistently enforce your boundaries, even when it's uncomfortable or difficult. The Stoics, particularly Epictetus, emphasized the importance of discipline and perseverance. By consistently upholding your boundaries, you demonstrate self-respect and teach others how to treat you. If someone repeatedly crosses your boundaries, it's a clear sign that they do not respect you or your limits, and it may be necessary to reassess the relationship. It's also important to remember that setting boundaries is not a one-time event, but an ongoing process. As relationships evolve, your boundaries may need to be adjusted. For instance, in a work environment, you might need to set boundaries around your availability and workload to prevent burnout. You could say to a colleague or supervisor, I am happy to help with this project, but I cannot take on additional tasks beyond my current responsibilities. The Stoics would advise us to balance our duties and not overextend ourselves to the detriment of our well-being. One of the most challenging aspects of setting boundaries is dealing with the pushback or resistance you might encounter. People who are used to getting their way, especially those with controlling or manipulative tendencies, may not take kindly to your newfound assertiveness. They might react with anger, guilt-tripping, or even attempts to undermine your confidence. The Stoics teach us to remain calm and steadfast in the face of such challenges. Marcus Aurelius wrote about the importance of maintaining our composure and not being swayed by the negative emotions of others. When you encounter resistance, stay firm and remind yourself that your boundaries are necessary for your well-being. In some cases, setting boundaries might mean making difficult decisions, such as distancing yourself from certain individuals, or even ending relationships that are toxic or harmful. This can be a painful process, but it's essential for preserving your mental and emotional health. The Stoics would remind us that our primary responsibility is to our own virtue and well-being. Seneca often spoke about the importance of choosing our associations wisely recognizing that the company we keep can significantly impact our character and happiness. By distancing yourself from those who consistently violate your boundaries, you are making a powerful statement about your self-worth and commitment to living a virtuous life. It's also helpful to seek support from others when setting boundaries. This could mean talking to trusted friends, family members, or a therapist about your experiences and getting their input and encouragement. Sharing your struggles and successes with boundary setting can provide you with valuable perspective and strengthen your resolve. The Stoics valued community and the support of like-minded individuals. Marcus Aurelius often reflected on the interconnectedness of humanity and the importance of mutual support. By leaning on your support network, 
you can find the strength to uphold your boundaries and maintain your well-being. In addition, practicing self-care is crucial when setting and maintaining boundaries. This includes taking time for yourself, engaging in activities that bring you joy and relaxation, and nurturing your physical and mental health. The Stoics believed in the importance of self-care as a foundation for a virtuous life. Epictetus, for example, emphasized the need to care for our own well-being so that we can be of service to others and fulfill our responsibilities effectively. By prioritizing self-care, you reinforce the message that your well-being is important and deserving of protection. Remember that setting boundaries is a form of self-respect and self-love. It's about recognizing your own value and refusing to allow others to diminish it. The Stoics teach us that our worth is not determined by external factors, but by our own actions and integrity. By setting and maintaining boundaries, you are living in accordance with these principles and fostering a life of peace, virtue, and resilience. Remember, your peace and integrity are worth protecting, no matter who tries to undermine them. Setting boundaries is not just a defense mechanism. It's a declaration of your self-worth and commitment to living a virtuous life. Thank you for joining me today and being a part of Stoicism Philosophy. If you found this helpful, make sure to check out one of the suggested videos on the screen for more insights. Stay strong, stay wise, and keep living your truth.